Hi there, this is Duncan. I'm going to give you a quick introduction to using Sibelius. If you're new to Sibelius, I do recommend that you look at the video tutorials and also the print tutorials that came with Sibelius with your discs, or they can be downloaded from um, the website, sibelius.com. Uh, there is also another great online tutorial you should look at called Learn Sibelius in an Hour. Uh, that is a very good uh, tutorial which is similar to what we're doing here. Um, however, that is only for Sibelius 5 and Sibelius 6, so I thought I would do a tutorial to introduce you to Sibelius 7, as I imagine that's what a lot of schools will increasingly be moving to over the next 12 months. Okay, when you first start Sibelius, you come up with a window which looks like this, the Quick Start window. If you don't see this, you can try and go to File and New or Quick Start, which would bring up the same window. In here you can see what scores you've opened recently, you can import MIDI files which is great if you've created something in Reaper or another application as a MIDI file, you can then import it here and see it in this notation. There's some tutorials here which you can look at, this is a, the web link for taking you to them online. But what we're going to do is create a new score. Now we're just going to start off with a blank score and start it completely from scratch. If you look through here you'll see there are lots of presets but quite often there aren't many which are exactly what you need. However, things like string quartet, wind quartet, wind quintet can be very useful. Okay, so we're going to start with on a blank score. A4, that suits me fine. I'm going to start off with portrait. Sometimes it's really good to have it in landscape, particularly if you're doing a large orchestral score. They lend themselves um, to being a lot neater if they're in landscape view rather than portrait. But we're just doing this playful, playful pizzicato um, score here, which has only got two instruments, now our adapted version. So we're going to stick with portrait, it'll look the best. House style, I'm going to leave that unchanged. But in here, this is how you make your score look different with different fonts. It also relates to uh, what kind of playback sounds you're going to have if you've got different things loaded on your system, such as I've got these East West Quantum Leap Symphony, um, Symphonic Orchestra and Symphonic Choir selection which can be uh, give you some different sounds, but we won't look at those today. Um, I'm just going to leave it as unchanged though, which is probably what you need to do as well. Right, instruments, right into it. The great thing about this new version of Sibelius is that everything is nicely um, subcategorized, but it also makes it very easy to find it, rather than having to go through all of these subcategories if you're wanting to find your strings, for example, you can just type it in up here. I'm going to go for violin 1, brings it straight to us, and there's violin 2 as well, double click it. Now this is quite important to know what's going on here, let's say you had another instrument as well, let's say you had a guitar, an acoustic guitar, let's say you wanted your acoustic guitar to be at the bottom of the score, where well, you highlight it and you move it down, simple as that. If you didn't want it to be there, you delete it. If you want an extra staff for a particular instrument, extra staff below. We don't need that though, so we'll get rid of that. Moving on, in, in Playful Pizzicato we have a timing of 6-8, a time signature of 6-8. Next we have our area which we can put in a pickup bar, an upbeat or an acrusis. If we had a, a quaver upbeat in the bar before the first bar, this is where you would put it in. But we haven't got one for this adapted version, so we'll leave that out. Tempo text. You can do a drop down menu here to find what you're after and most of what you need is there. We're choosing Presto. If you're doing a modern um, jazz score or a pop rock score it might be more appropriate to use a metronome marking such as this one, crotchet equals 100 which is 100 beats per minute. However we're not so we will take that out. Down to the key signature. Sibelius now categorizes all your keys in major sharp keys, major flat keys, minor sharp keys and minor flat keys. We're using the key of F major, which is of course one flat. So Sibelius does require you to know a little bit of your theory knowledge of key signatures, which is important for all musicians, so you do need to go away and learn it if you haven't already. And we come down to put in our title, Playful Pizzicato, with a composer songwriter, in this case is Benjamin Britten. We'll just do Britten here. You can create a title page and put other information in, but we don't need that for now, so we're just going to go and create. And here we are. Now, at this stage, you've done most of what you need to do for this um, outcome of this unit standard. 
But we want to go a little bit further than that. We do want to input some notes. And we're going to start off with the violin two part. Now for some of you, if you are not a fast uh, keyboardist or a good keyboardist, which does include myself actually, um, you can import it with just typing the notes on your keyboard, but that is shown in a print tutorial in your workbook. Here I want to show you how to use a MIDI keyboard. First old thing I'll show you though is the step time input using the MIDI keyboard. I've clicked on my very first um, note or rhythm in this first bar, and I'll tell it that it's going to be a quaver. Now I can just click, uh, play on my keyboard the notes. F, A, C, B flat, G, E, F. Simple as that. However, you do not have to use your MIDI keyboard for input if you do not have one, as Sibelius does have a virtual keyboard for use, much like GarageBand or Reaper. It can be found under the View tab, Panels, Keyboard. And when you're in here, make sure you've got this button here clipped, as it now means that you can input the notes using um, this. So if we make sure we have a rhythm there, Voila. And you can play that in real time as well, but I find it very hard to do that on a computer keyboard. It's very unfamiliar. But we're going to also show you what you need to do with playing in on a MIDI keyboard in real time. With this one, just highlight your first bar. Let's go to our play menu. We can see our record button. Sometimes it's helpful to have the transport out separately, and that can also be found in here under your view tab panels transport if you're familiar from that from Sibelius's two three four five or six I'm not sure if Sibelius had one had it or not I wasn't I can't remember back that far anyway let's bring it back to play and we can do it from there also it will give us a click intro and then we'll start before I start recording though to make up for my uh, inadequate keyboard skills I'm going to be going to note input and putting some input quantize on everything by going to note input and clicking on flexi time, I can tell it that firstly I do not want the tempo to change and secondly the smallest note I'm going to be inputting is a quaver. That's important because otherwise I'll be putting in semi-quavers but we have no semi-quavers in this piece so we'll stick with a quaver and go OK. The other thing about it, it is presto, it is very quick, I might just slow it down on a transport tempo over here. Just make it a little bit easier. And let's record it. Here we go. We're going to have us one bars intro, and here we start. Okay, and space bar to stop. And that's looking pretty much right. I'm pretty happy with what I've got there. I could continue through and record the whole violin two part and then go and do the whole violin one part. And if you're a competent keyboardist, that is the quickest way of doing it. There will be very little for you to fix up. But instead of doing that just now, I'm going to quickly show you how you can then do it in bits like this and then copy it across. So we've got this little line here. This is a similar rhythm to the first rhythm that's going to be occurring in the violin one part. So I can select all those notes there, highlight them, copy them, Command C or Control C if you're using Windows, and then find up in the violin one part the last rhythm of that bar, which takes a little bit of setting up because you've got to specify these other rhythms first, and then Control V or Command V to paste. Now it's not quite right, I can just push my two down arrows and now it looks much better. Only thing I'm missing is the accidental of C sharp on the last note. I can click on it and in my keypad down here, put a sharpen. Now this keypad is really important. If it's missing for you, once again, can be found in the view menu under panels, keypad. It's pretty vital to have out. Okay, I've gone and played in all of my notes using my MIDI keyboard in real time. It's now time to put in all the other information and data to make this look like a real score that musicians would actually want to play. The first thing that's been bugging me about it is that you have noticed that all of the notes are played with arco or bowed sounds. But of course this piece is playful pizzicato and they are supposed to be pits. So I'll input that by clicking on my first note, going Command T or Control T if I was on Windows, and right clicking this flashing cursor to put in 
fits marking there. You can also type it in, so that's what I'll do over here. Command T, pits, full stop, done. Same over here. Very useful. The next thing that's important for me to put in are our dynamics. Similar technique, except I'm going to go Command E or Control E if I was in Windows for expression text. Right click and choose Pianissimo or PP. Over here I'll do something similar. I'll go Command E to put in my expression text, but I'll hold down Command or Control if I was on Windows and go PP rather than using a drop down menu. You can do that for common dynamic markings. The next thing I have is a crescendo marking on these three notes. I click on the first note, hold down shift, click on the final note. I can now push L for line, and I have my crescendo marking right there. Hairpin. And then this crescendo arrives on this note here which needs to have a tenuto, which you can find on your keypad right here. Now I just want to take a quick moment now to highlight the keypad because on here you have all of the most common things you'll probably need for inputting uh, or altering notes on your score. It's really important that you look through these uh, sub-menus up here and see all of the options that you have available to you because most of everything you're going to need to do you can find in here. Don't just get used to seeing it as this one window here. Do get used to seeing what the other options are because no doubt you'll have to put them in at some stage. Okay, now you just need to go through and put in all of the rest of the accents or staccatos if there are any, or maccatos or tenutos, put in any dynamics, and then you'll be all done. So that's a really quick, really fast introduction to Sibelius. It might be an idea for you to watch the video over again, but whatever you do, make sure you do sit down and try everything for yourself. Thanks very much, I hope you found this helpful.